when the tailwinds are blowing, you got to keep on going. I did make it into Platoro last night, uh, just barely before the sun set. After coming into Colorado, I had a pretty good descent on some pavement, which was a lot of fun after all those rocky parts. And then I got into a town there, it was about four o'clock, had 23 miles left to Platoro. I was like, I can make it, just a gradual uphill, but that gradual uphill took a lot out of me. I think I was just spent from earlier in the day. Uh, the road was washboarded and bumpy a lot of the way. Uh, last bit I was going into the sun. I never like riding into the sun. It's just kind of demoralizing and you can't see anything. Uh, but I finally made it into town around 7.30. Originally my plan was to go to the RV park because the maps say that uh, they let cyclists camp there and then they have a cafe. But when I got there they had already closed. So I went over to the lodge and their rest restaurant was still open for another 30 minutes. So had just enough time to down a giant cheeseburger and tons of fries, which was really good. Really thankful they were still open. Uh, would not have been as happy eating the one granola bar and a little bit of beef jerky I had left. Uh, so I picked up a couple snacks there after I ate. And then they actually let me sleep in their laundry room. So last night I slept underneath the folding table of a laundry mat. Um, but yeah, it was good to get out of the, the wind. It got pretty cold last night. I think I was about 9,700 feet. And then today I had a climb, short climb and a descent, and then a big climb up to where I'm at now. And as you can see, it is beautiful up here. Uh, nice to be in Colorado. Uh, I don't know what I'm at now, probably 10, 11,000 feet. I got some ups and downs until I get to the big pass later today, which will be at almost 12,000 feet. So I'll catch up back with you then. All right, guys, Indiana Pass, 11,910 feet. Tallest point on the Great Divide mountain bike route. So awesome descent from Indiana Pass, as you just saw. Dropped about 4,000 feet coming into Del Norte. Pretty fun descent. Uh, once I got into town, I went to a restaurant, grabbed another burger. Somehow I keep picking the one restaurant in town that's closing early just on that day of the week. So had to head out of there before I thought uh, I'd have to. Went over to the gas station, sat at a table inside there for a couple hours just to let it cool down. Uh, it wasn't too hot, 80s, but coming up from 12,000 feet it felt pretty hot. So just hung out there for a little bit, did about 13 more miles I think to Pinatante Canyon campground here, just a little bit off route here. Um, and it's pretty cool here. It's, it reminds me of like a mini Joshua tree a little bit. So I'm gonna eat some dinner, get some sleep, and then I got two big climbs coming up tomorrow.
so yesterday turned out to be interesting. Accidentally ended up doing 94 miles. So the day started off with, well, I had two gradual climbs and descents. Uh, there were good roads, not too steep, just grinding out in my granny gear for a few hours each one. Uh, I was pretty tired getting up to the top of the second one. And then I hit uh, a road and I was only gonna do about five more miles, but a big storm was coming around and the road kind of went around this mountain here and I was just having huge tailwinds slash crosswinds and it just blew me. I mean, I was flying. It's probably going like 25, 30 miles an hour without pedaling, just crazy tailwinds. Uh, you had to be careful though because all of a sudden a big gust crosswind would come in and it would move you over and make sure I wasn't going to get thrown off the road by those crosswinds. Sorry I didn't film much uh, through that area with all the wind. I was kind of needing to pay attention to make sure I didn't get blown off the road, like I said. Um, it was a pretty cool area. The wide open, big green rolling hills, no trees anywhere, and then kind of on the outside of all the hills were like these big peaks with some snow on them still. So ended up doing, those tailwinds blew me about 15 miles. And then I got to the highway, which put me in a little bit of a predicament because then there was definitely no good place to camp. So I ended up having to do another 12 miles into the town here, Sargent's. Uh, unfortunately, there was a kind of a headwind on that road, but it wasn't too bad. So I got here, uh, a little RV park trading post thing. Got a surprise good meal, a surprise shower. Slept here last night, and now I just got one more pass to Salida and it should be a shorter day today because I was only planning on doing about 67 yesterday and I did 94. So I had a pretty short day coming into Salida today, thanks to that unexpected long day yesterday. Had a pretty mellow climb this morning, uh, good roads, not too steep of a grade, and then a pretty awesome descent, uh, as you saw from the footage there. Got into Salida about 12.30, I think, which gave me plenty of time to go by the post office, mail some stuff back I wasn't using, like an extra jersey and the maps from the last two sections. Uh, I went to a bike shop, got a new magnet for the cycling computer that's on my bike. Hoping that fixes the intermittent problem I've been having. It Sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't. So I think my magnet's just been too beat up over the years. Uh, got some good pizza and then checked in at the hostel here already showered and stuff like that. So coming into Salida today marks the end of the second section of the Great Divide route. This last section was Grants to Salida and it's pretty good, pretty tough section. Coming from Grants to Cuba was a really tough section. Uh, most people out here cycling are doing the Tour Divide route which takes a an easier paved alternate around that area. It's like 120 miles paved and it's like 18 miles shorter or something like that. And it misses all that deserty wasteland area where it's going up and out of those arroyos and everything. Uh, I don't know why they take the shortcut, but I'm pretty I'm pretty happy with taking the main route, even though it was harder. It was a good section. Glad I did it. Uh, let's see. After Cuba, northern New Mexico is pretty. Uh, mountainous, a lot of tough climbs. That few days there was really tiring. And then coming into Colorado, not as tough climbs. Um, feels like you're up in the mountains more. Um, so yeah, all in all a good section. 
Today also marks the point where I surpassed a thousand miles. I think I'm about 1,013 miles for the trip so far. So I'm about a third of the way done, uh, miles wise, uh, including my extra part from El Paso. I think it's going to be 31, 3200 miles or something. So just about a third of the way done. We got five sections left up until Jasper. And so far, so good. All right, guys, I'm going to go finish off the rest of that pizza I had for lunch and then spend a good night in a bed. All right. So I had a pretty short day coming into Salida. Blah, blah, blah.